Greetings, everybody. Let's take a look at Judges chapter 21. Continuation of what's going on here. The tribe of Benjamin is just about wiped out, I guess. That's the way I look at it. So let's take a look. Judges chapter 21. King James Bible, Chaplain Bob Walker. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. So they're not going to give their daughters to Benjamin to be a wife. And it appears that they, it looks like they've killed the women in Benjamin too when they, had their battle I, that's kind of like what it's looking like because if uh i mean you know the tribes were supposed to marry within their own tribe you know levites were to marry levites and what have you you know so Verse 2, And the people came to the house of God and abode there till even before God and lifted up their voices and wept sore and said, O Lord, God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose up early and built there an altar and offered burnt offering and peace offerings. And the children of Israel said, Who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord to Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. So when this uh, evil thing had happened with the concubine, uh, they sent to the heads of all the other tribes and said, well, we're going to have a great meeting, and your attendance is required. So, he, so if they didn't show up, they're going to be put to death. Verse 6, And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother, and said, There is one tribe cut off from Israel to this day. How shall we do for wives, for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? And they said, What one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpah to the Lord? And behold, there came none to the camp from Jabesh Gilead to the assembly. For the people were numbered, and behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead there. Boy, some of these Old Testament names, you know how it is. So here it is, they got a city that uh, didn't show up. So they're going to uh, punish that city bad. And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men of the valiantest and commanded them, saying, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children. Now, why are you going to kill the children? They got, you know, this is stuff I don't, I just don't get in the Bible. Verse 11. And this is the thing that you shall do. You shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. So every female that's not a virgin, she's in big trouble. Um, and, you know, it makes me wonder, how do they uh, make that determination? Hmm. I guess they had a test for that. I wonder if they had a uh, like the PCR test where they take the uh, swab and stick it up the nose or somewhere else. I, I don't know. Never mind. And they found among the inhabitants of 
Jabesh Gilead, 400 young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male, and they brought them unto the camp of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Rimmon, and to call peaceably unto them. So evidently, this is like all, all that's left of Benjamin. You know, a few hundred. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives, which they had saved alive, of the women of Jabesh Gilead, and yet so they sufficed them not. I guess there's not enough of them, not enough women, I guess. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? So evidently, they not only killed the men, they killed the women out of Benjamin too. Oh uh, boy, I'll tell you what, I this kind of stuff is... Oof. Why would they kill the women? I, I don't get it. There's a lot of stories in the Old Testament. I I don't know. I can see why people like to be New Testament Christians. And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit, we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel had sworn, have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh, yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south to Lebanon. Lebon, Lebon, Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie await in the vineyards. And see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. Yeah, I've heard it said that a, a woman will uh, let a man chase her until she decides to let him catch her. I don't know. Uh, so, when the women came out to dance, uh, they were going to chase the women and catch the one they wanted. Uh, verse 22, And it shall be when their fathers or their brethren come unto us to complain, that we will say unto them, Be favorable unto them for our sakes, because we reserved not to each man his wife in the war. For ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be guilty. And the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to their number of them that danced whom they caught. And they went and returned unto their inheritance and repaired the cities and dwelt in them. And the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. So they all went home. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So here it is, they fought to put away evil, and then they go back to doing the same stuff. You know, hey, if I feel like doing this, I'm going to do it. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, I, I think there was like five or six hundred Benjamites left after this great slaughter. You know, the, the tribe was almost exterminated. And remember, the first king of Israel was King Saul. And he was of the tribe of Benjamin. And... Paul, the Apostle, Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul the Apostle, he was also of the tribe of 
Benjamin. You know, there's a reason why the Lord picked 12 apostles. I am pretty sure that um, there was one apostle from each tribe. I mean, let's face it. Uh, you know, there's going to be 12 gates into the New Jerusalem, one for each tribe. Of course, your denominational churches will, uh, uh, you know, 12 gates, 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, yeah, there is no 13th Gentile gate, is there? No. You're either part of the 12 tribes or you're not. So let's go to Revelation 21 real quick. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high. See, heaven has a wall. I've heard hell has open borders, but uh, yeah. And who's always pushing for uh, open borders? Yeah. Yeah. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And no, it's not Bill. And had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Huh. But Chaplain Bob, there's, you know, Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles. Well, where's that 13th gate, buddy boy? The 13th Gentile gate, where is that? Uh, I don't know. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. Sorry, I don't see Bill there. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Ah. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 49. If you read the whole chapter, you would see the blessings that... Uh, Israel bestowed upon his children, Jacob Israel. But we're not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to start in verse 25, uh, the part about Benjamin. Genesis 49, 25. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings. Of heaven above, rain, right? Blessings of the deep that lieth under. Uh, I suppose that could mean uh, fish from the depths of the ocean. And also, more importantly, uh, wealth that comes from the ground. And, uh, you know, possibly, you know, gold and silver. But my opinion, even more important than that, is... Uh, you know, food, you know, uh, corn and wheat and rye and what have you. Blessings of the deep that lieth under. Blessings of the breasts. Well, if you have a child, a baby, a newborn, and the mother doesn't have any milk for in her breasts, well, you know, they didn't have Enfamil back in them days. You know, and uh, you can't feed a baby steak. So you had to have blessings of the bre breasts and of the womb. 
children were considered a blessing and a heritage from the Lord. Nowadays, uh, oh, well, you don't want a kid. They're too much trouble. Um, you know, uh, eh, just birth control, or if that don't work, well, you know, always have an abortion. That's, that's the world. Verse 26, the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. Uh, what is progenitors? Ancestors, right? The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessing, blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph. And on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Now remember, Benjamin was the brother of younger brother of Joseph. Verse 27. Israel, Jacob Israel proclaims, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning. He shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them, every one according to his blessing, he blessed them. See, every tribe was to get a different blessing. Judah was to be the king. Levi was uh, to serve the Lord. Let's take a look at Judah. Let's go to uh, Genesis 49 and verse 8. This is some, uh, this can preach. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. And where was Christ from? Christ was from the tribe of Judah. I've had some people say, no, no, he's from Joseph. What? Read Luke chapter 3 if you think uh, Jesus is from Joseph. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. So, Judah's going to be a warlike tribe. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Well, guess what? Judah was the tribe of all the kings. And eventually, Christ, right? Verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. Huh. Uh, what is Christ called? The lion of the tribe of Judah in Revelation, right? Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter, now a scepter was a, a, a rod, that uh, if you ever see pictures of kings, especially England, uh, they would hold a rod. That was a scepter. That was a significance with uh, rulership and royalty. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. So kingship and rulership shall never depart from ruler nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Who was the lawgiver? Well, tribe of Levi. Moses was of the tribe of Levi. But ultimately, who gave Moses the law? Christ, in his pre-incarnate human form, right? Before he was born of a woman. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. 
And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now, according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia, Shiloh is mainly known as the name of the biblical city which preceded Jerusalem as the central worship site of the early Israelites. Uh, one Bible line might indicate that it was also used as the personal name of a biblical figure. Ah, oh, okay. So, obviously, I think Shiloh has reference to Christ. That's my opinion. All right, so Genesis 49, 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Isn't one day when Christ returns, he's going to gather his people? Absolutely. Verse 11. Binding his foal unto the vine. What, did, uh, what about a foal? A foal, the colt of an ass. Uh, isn't that what happened when uh, Christ went into Jerusalem just before he got crucified? Into the vine. The vine was a symbol of Israel. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. What did Christ say at the Last Supper? The bread was his flesh and the wine was his blood. Doesn't the Bible talk about those that wash their robes white in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could make, I could make a whole sermon on this. Maybe I should. In Mark chapter 14, we're just going to kind of breeze through this. Verse 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Christ is the bread of life, right? Verse 23, And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Not all, many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine. What's the fruit of the vine? Grapes. Wine, right? Wine and vine. Rhyme. I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So let's take a look at Revelation 7 real quick. I guess we'll start in verse 12. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? So, who are these that are standing here dressed in white robes, and where did they come from? Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Uh, what are you asking me for? You know the answer to this. Oh, yeah. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Mm. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. 
Hmm. Let's go back to Genesis 49. 11. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. So there you go. Benjamin and tribe of Judah. You know, and this is prophecy in the book of Genesis. When I hear people say, oh, well, we're New Testament Christians. We don't read the Old Testament. What? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him, and unto him, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Really? You don't know? You, you don't read the Old Testament? How? And then you complain, well, I don't understand the New Testament. You know, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, that's fine. You know, the thief on the cross was saved with very little knowledge, probably. But if you really want to understand the New Testament, you got to read the Old Testament. And besides, if the devil tricks people, by having them take the mark of the beast and you don't understand or if you deny Christ before men to save your life, that Christ will deny you before the Father and his angels, you got a problem. What are you going to do? Say, well, I, I believe in Jesus. Well, I think it's James chapter 1. Even the devils believe in Christ. Even the devils believe in tremble. Or is that James chapter? No, that's James chapter 2. It says, faith without works is dead being alone. If you are grafted into the tree, you should be producing fruit. That's just the way it is. You don't produce fruit to be a tree. You produce fruit because you are the tree of the tree one of the branches of the tree so all righty well i think should uh close this out all blessings praise glory and honor and god to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb slain from the foundation of the world all blessings praise glory and honor in his name jesus name amen